Hi, I'm Christian, and as part of the team here at Freedom Church, I'd like to welcome you along to our online teaching. It really is great that you've decided to join us. Today, we have Paul speaking to us on the second part of his two-part series, entitled Building with Gold, Silver and Precious Stones. If you happen to miss last week, then that's not a problem because it's available on our YouTube channel. But before we go over to Paul, let's just pray. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you that we can come into your presence through your son, Jesus. We thank you for the price that he paid to restore our relationship to you, Lord. So we we come before you now with our hearts open. And may you just come and speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let's go over to hear what Paul has to say to us. Hello. Last week I started by talking about Psalm 127 and we covered the first two verses really. This is a psalm of ascent. There are 15 of them, some short and some a little bit longer. And they are meant to be sung by the Israelites as they walked up the hill to Jerusalem, as they ascended for the celebrations God had called them to. And he called them for three times a year. So this was these psalms would have been sung out, all 15 of them, quite often. Can I just read the whole of Psalm 127? And I'd like to start it off with in the message. And, and this psalm is written by King Solomon. And it goes like this. If God doesn't build the house, the builders only build shacks. If God doesn't guard the city, the night watchman might as well nap. It's useless to rise early and go to bed late and work your worried fingers to the bone. Don't you know, he enjoys giving rest to those he loves. Don't you see that children are God's best gift, the fruit of the womb, his generous legacy? Like a warrior's fistful of arrows are the children of a vigorous youth. Oh, how blessed are you parents with your quivers full of children. Your enemies don't stand a chance against you. You'll sweep them right off your doorstep. I love the psalm. I've grown very attached to this psalm at the moment. And I think it was first given to me in about uh, 1996, I believe. But let's carry on. Prayer. What a weapon that is. Prayer makes a difference. Can I just encourage you in praying through all things, all things, good or bad, in all situations. Paul in Philippians 4, 6 says this. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. And supplication is the action of asking for something earnestly or humbly. With thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And Jesus really sort of proved this point uh, with his disciple, Peter. Jesus knew that Peter was going to deny him before the cock had crowed three times. In other words, before the sun was up. Peter was going to fail. But Jesus knew that Peter was going to be sifted like wheat by the enemy. He told Peter, Peter, I'm praying for you. And Peter needed it. And actually, so do we. See, Satan has a plan to steal, kill and destroy any of us or or take away in attempt to stop our legacy in Christ Jesus. Steal from you, to take away all the building you have done, all the good works for Christ. All that we could be building with gold, silver and precious stones. And we talked about those last week. To kill you, to take you out, making your life in Christ not count. To destroy all the inheritance you have put down. Not money, but the inheritance into people's lives, both our physical or our spiritual children. But Jesus has come that you would have life and life to the full. John 10.10 is a marvellous 
uh, chapter. Questions for you right now. Are you living life to the full? If not, where are you being robbed? What's been stolen from you? Or what is the enemy trying to steal from you? Have you given up trying to build God's kingdom? Because it just hurts. It's painful. It is a struggle. What's being killed that you know? That Christ put deep inside you? A vision maybe? Or the belief that your life can make a big difference in this world? Because it can. It can. Do you think that it's too late to leave a godly spiritual inheritance for your children. It's never too late. Have you messed up? Has that sure hope been destroyed, damaged, removed from you? This is a day, this is a place where you can bring what has been stolen, killed and destroyed and you can leave it. You have no need to keep carrying around regrets and lies. Today, we can leave whatever it is at the foot of the cross. And Jesus asks us to restore us, raise us up to new life. He wants to restore what's been stolen. He wants to bring to life what's been killed and what's been destroyed by the enemy. It's not too late. Jesus prayed for Peter. In other words, Jesus was really saying, I know you are weak, but I see beyond this to what you're going to do with me in you. That's what Jesus was really saying deep down here. And when you realise that this Jesus Christ wants to do this in each of our lives, and for us to start living it out, then we are to turn around and strengthen our brothers. Jesus says, my prayer is going to carry you through this experience. He may have to humble us a little, but in all these things, there are lessons to be learned. Our enemy hasn't changed, but Jesus Christ has not changed either. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen. He knows we need to be dependent on him. We might think we depend on him until a situation brings to light that, well, we haven't got him quite in the right place. Or we simply try and do it by ourselves in our own strength. I know Jesus will allow us to fail time and time again. Until perhaps, and I'll suggest our pride, our arrogance has fully gone. And we've truly learned dependence on him for all things. The way Jesus was praying for Peter is the way he is praying in heaven for each of us. For you and for me before the Father. Right now, today, he's doing that. The Holy Spirit wants you to catch Jesus' heart and then catch his heart for others around us. Can I take a look at this uh, latter verse of this psalm today? This is the part that really excites me. This psalm, it sort of starts off and then after the first two verses, it totally switches track. And, uh, uh, and uh, I talked about the first two verses last week. It starts off by talking about working without God and how we worry and our work our fingers to the bone if we don't have Christ with us. Then the last verbal, four verses start off by declaring this gift a blessing, a heritage. Children are a heritage from the Lord. Or other versions say children are a gift from the Lord. And even one or two versions say children are a blessing from the Lord. Do you know there's nothing negative in the Bible about children? Not one word. There are many lessons to be learned for each of us through children. 
They offer substantial lessons for which God wants to teach each of us. Last week, we also looked at 1 Corinthians uh, from in chapter 3, verse 6 to 15. And I'm just going to read that. And this is Paul speaking. And he says, I planted the seed. Apollos watered it. But God has been making it grow. So neither one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labour. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. By the grace of God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay or straw, their work will be shown up for what it is because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire. The fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burnt up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved even though only as one escaping through the flames. Last week, we looked at the difference in building with wood, hay and straw, and then what is meant by building with gold, silver and precious stones. Gold and motivation, pure love for Christ Jesus. And silver talks about redemption, And that we can be redeeming things in this world. He wants us to redeem situations in people's lives. We are bought at a price. We are the redeemed. And precious stones. As Aaron used to carry the ethod over his uh, heart. And they represented each tribe. Each of the 12 tribes. People. Children. Are represented by precious stones. So you see, we believe you have to, we have to teach our children and bring them up understanding God's ways. We must not leave it to the schools or YouTube or their friends or TikTok on the phone, whatever. We must teach them God's ways or I believe we're letting them down. We need to build them up in the Lord. That's what this psalm is saying. Unless the Lord builds the house, it's useless. As we work with Jesus Christ, we can build these children into polished arrows. This psalm is all about building up the next generation. If we're going to fight any battle at all, then it just just must be on behalf of the next generation. They are tomorrow's church. They're going to inherit what you and I build, what we leave, they're inherited. What you leave, what we leave as an inheritance. And if we're just letting this world teach them, then it's going to be nothing. Is the wood, hay and straw. And it's just going to, when it's touched by fire, it just becomes ash. Gold and silver are both refined by the fire and precious stones are not harmed. But the wood, hay and straw turn to ash when touched by fire. So many people come to us after hearing and understanding a teaching of God's ways and say, if only I'd known then what I know now, I would have made different choices. Yes, And we can all look back in hindsight, every single one of us. Hindsight is wonderful. If only we'd have it is in place of foresight. But the good news is we are learning 
each time we think that, we, are, we have learned and we can put the learning into practice and we can start to teach it to the younger generation. It's never too late. For the revelation is for now, as it says in Habakkuk 2.2. 2. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it lingers, wait for it. It will certainly come and not delay. Everything is in God's timing. Everything. It's not up to a government to teach our children. It's not up to teachers. Good they may be. It is parents' jobs. If we have received Christ, it is our work. We are to teach our own children and also any spiritual children that God might bring to us. Psalm 127 verse 4 says, Fruit of the womb is like arrows in the hand of a warrior. So are the children born in one's youth. Natural, spiritual children. Yes, you can have both. It's a joy for us to have both. Go to this website if you want to hear about one, about spiritual children. David Steele talk at the Ark in Arlesham. And I think it was in June he, he spoke there. And there are, the link is in the bio on this talk on YouTube. But before we go too much further, can I ask these questions so that each one of us might, might look at our own life and ask ourselves these questions. If you're married, can I ask, how am I building my marriage? Based on what I'm doing today, will my marriage flourish or perish? How am I building my children? Will my children pass the test of life because of what I'm putting into them? How am I building my relationships? Am I building my relationships with those around me so they can stand up against any storm? How am I building my ministry in Christ? And, and we are all in ministry. If we're Christians, if we accept Christ, we all have a job to do. Am I doing a lot of quick fixes that aren't the real solutions to the problems in my ministry? Am I taking time to build the ministry that God has entrusted to me? So it will last a lifetime and even to the next generation. If I'm in business, how am I building my business? Will the steps I am taking today build a long-term business or will I later regret what decisions I didn't make? How am I building my finances? Am I using my money in the way that is wise? Am I focused on building my own kingdom, perhaps? Spending it recklessly? Or am I investing in the kingdom of God for the surest, safest, disaster-proof return that lasts for eternity? How am I building? How am I building my health? If I keep doing what I'm doing right now, will I be healthier later in life? Or is my present lifestyle jeopardizing my future physical health? Interesting questions, aren't they? Yes, Jesus is the foundation under our life. Thank God for this awesome truth. What you build on top of that foundation depends on you. Many years ago, we took a, um, a group of teenagers, and there may be 20 of them, off to a, um, a Christian retreat in, here in Essex. They were between 15 and 20 years of age, and we took them away for two nights and three days. We had lots of fun and games, but we also taught them about God and his ways in relationships his best plan for their lives. We did talk about the inevitable. We talked about sex and sexuality and many other subjects. How do you have a relationship? 
one that can last. And this was something about 17 years ago. And about eight years ago, we had an email from one of the girls who had uh, come along, but not been brought up in a Christian family. Just, Just came along for part of the group. She had a faith in Christ. She had gone to lengths to get our contact details and say, thank you for your teaching us God's ways and relationships. I want you to know that I am getting married and both of us are virgins. We are so grateful to the teaching you gave. Spiritual children. There are loads of young people out there looking for spiritual mums and dads. People that are looking out for them. Because so many young people out there don't know what family in Christ is like. What is God's family like? And children are so pliable, so hungry to be educated, to be shaped and formed. They want to learn. They want to grow. There is a chance that they will be a reward for you. Can I just let you imagine at the moment, imagine being rewarded by Bill Gates. Father God is a billion times richer His reward is unimaginable for each of us. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. During the month of August, we have uh, on our YouTube channel, we we put up an interview by J. John with Dave Brennan, who has a ministry called Breathos. J. John says, says on John on Dave Brennan's website. And this is actual words written on the website. Abortion is seen as one of those taboo subjects. But as an evangelist, I am convinced that the gospel is big enough to handle this issue. He goes on, after 50 years of abortion in the UK, nine billion babies lost. It's high time that we, the church, consider the facts became a voice for the voiceless and held out words of the gospel of grace to those who have been involved in abortion. He goes on and says, I commend Dave Brennan and Brethos and all that they do to help us respond to this injustice. If you haven't heard it, it's worth listening to. That was quite an introduction from J. John. But for us, it's more important nine million children that we haven't got a chance to tell about Jesus Christ. Every time this comes up, there's a talk about the rape victim and and actually that represents the 2% of this figure. And and what we want to consider is what about the 98%? What about the 98%? And we're not killjoys. We're not killjoys. But, you know, if you have fire, if I had fire in the middle of this studio right now, it would, it would be a big problem, a big problem. But fire in the fireplace is in the right place. One in three women have had one in this country have had an abortion. One in three women have had an abortion in this country. How many of them carry guilt and shame when they can receive the forgiveness and be free of shame? We, as the church, have to be carriers of the love of Jesus without prejudice. Oh, how Jesus Christ stepped into our lives. And I was in my late 30s with four young children. So blessed, so blessed. He goes on, blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. Oh yes, I can tell you, that is a blessing that you will want. Uh, It's right now and it's for eternal. Then it goes on to say uh, much more to come, listen. Psalm 127 says, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labour in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. In vain you rise early, stay up late, toiling for food to eat. For he grants sleep to those he loves. 
Children are a heritage from the Lord, a blessing. Offspring, a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in the court. Just want to finish up really uh, talking about this last verse. They will, they, will, they will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court. And that really sort of, it's, it's, it's probably difficult for us to understand opponents in court. And so many other translations in the Bible, the last few words of this psalm, it speaks of with his enemies at the gate. Everything in the city, in the biblical times, took place at the gate. Everything took place there. It's where the court was in those days. Actually, it's where Ruth was redeemed by Boaz at the city gate. It was at the city gate that the leader of the city would meet an opposing army, making terms. So much took place at the city gate. The wife mentioned in Proverbs 31, and she's talked about for 21 verses, this incredible wife and listing off so much that she achieves, able to work so fruitfully. It seems like the husband is at the city gate all the time and she's doing all the work. It says in Proverbs uh, 31, verse 23, her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. Can I just tell you that everything that happens at the city gate, the gate of your life, we have to look at the Old Testament as the physical and take it into the spiritual because we're living in that time right now. The Lord watches over the city, over our life. Know this husband He is passionately intimate with the Lord. He knows the word of the Lord. He's acutely aware of his part in any spiritual battle and he's at the city gate. He's at the spiritual gate, spiritually battling for his family. That's why, I believe, that's why she can achieve so much. We have to know where our gate is. Jesus made this statement in Matthew 16, 18. The gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Whether you know it or not, our job commission is to invest in the next generation. Male or female, to guide, pray, for, the, for, the, for us to be the signpost to Christ. These young disciples need us. Some of the best of our team work with children. Some will be making spiritual children. And as God says in Isaiah 49 too, he made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. They are making arrows to go into the Lord's quiver. Listen to what David says about them in Psalm 18, verse 34. He trains my hands for battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. As you know, bows are made of wood. As men cannot bend a bronze, a rod. God is building them up with polished arrows in their quiver, natural or spiritual, either boy or girl, will they be able to hit their target, their God-given target? Oh, yes, they will. Let me just read the whole of Psalm 127 again from the message. This is from Solomon, King Solomon, the wisest man at that time. If God doesn't build the house, the builders only build shacks. If God doesn't guard the city, the night watchman might as well nap. It's useless to rise up early and go to bed late 
and work your worried fingers to the bone. Don't you know he enjoys giving rest to those he loves? Don't you see that children are God's best gift, the fruit of the womb, his generous legacy? Like a warrior's fistful of arrows are the children of a vigorous youth. Oh, how blessed are you parents with your quivers full of children. Your enemies don't stand a chance against you. You'll sweep them right off your doorstep. Just let me pray now. Lord, I thank you that we have your word to guide us. That we have no need to strive in this world. That doesn't mean we don't have to work. We do have to work. There is jobs for each of us, Lord. and We know that. And Lord, that you want us to build an intimate relationship with you. Lord, I just ask that at this time, if anyone feels that they've had anything uh, stolen from them, they're being, their dreams have been killed in any way, or oh, they've been robbed, Lord, at this time, kill, kill, steal, or destroy, Lord, that's what the enemy attempts to do. Lord, if that is applicable in anyone's life listening to this talk, Lord, can in the in the next few moments, can we just give it to you and ask your Holy Spirit to come? Holy Spirit, just come upon these people right now. Take off the, the death of whatever's gone away. And whatever's been stolen, Lord, would you replace it a hundred times fold? And whatever's been destroyed, would you build up, Lord? Would you build them up in them? Lord, I just ask, give you thanks that your Holy Spirit is working right now in many people's lives. Many people's lives. Lord, help us to build the next generation with you. Show us how we can work with your Holy Spirit to make polished arrows. The next generation, Lord. The next church. And Lord, building an inheritance for ourselves. One that lasts for eternity with gold, silver and precious stones. And Lord, we ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.